Thank you very much, Jill. Uh, good morning, and or good, good morning for us, but good afternoon for you all in the UK. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be speaking to you all, um, and it's a pleasure to be speaking about Minas Gerais. Uh, we've opened a new British consulate here, inaugurated in September last year. Um, it's a very big, a very important uh, state in Brazil, economically and politically. Um, so it's, it's a big step for the, the British government in, in doing so. Um, and certainly the commercial opportunities is, is a key reason why we're here. So we're looking forward to telling you a bit about that today. But first we want to present to you um, the, the team we have here. Uh, company myself today is Romero Brito, our UK Thai manager. Natalia Gomigi, our UK Thai assistant manager. Andreas Giarfas, our Healthcare UK business specialist. And Carolina Christofferu, our administrative and commercial assistant. If you could please change the slide, please. So this will give you just a quick overview of what we're looking to cover today. Um, I want to emphasize that this is an overview of opportunities in the state, so we're not looking to go in any great detail um, in any specific sector, but of course we're keen to hear back from you your interests so we can you know, follow up on that and, and if need be um, address more specifically each sector. Um, so we're looking forward to engagement, and please during Q&A, please don't hold back on, on asking questions to us and, and, and challenging us on opportunities. Next slide, please. So quickly start an overview of the state itself um, and, and reasons for us to be here. Well, firstly, we say the consulate has three key priorities here in, in the coming years, which is business, education, and sport. Um, sport is what brought us here. Uh, we're very delighted to, to say and to share that our British Olympic and Paralympic athletes will be based here in the capital city, Belo Horizonte, for their pre-games training camp. So we'll have between 700 and 800 personnel, be it athletes, coaches, staff, um, transiting through the city before they go on to, to competition in Rio and hopefully bring back you know, gold medals uh, that we can celebrate. Um, but also, we, we won't hesitate to say it's a challenging time in Brazil. Uh, you will all know that and follow the news very closely, and some of you already have business interests here. Um, but despite that, given the size of the opportunities in Minas Gerais and the importance economically the state has, and generally um, the potential to scale up the amount of British businesses and involvement participation, um, this is why you know we're here today and we're keen to promote um, British products uh, in the state. To give you a quick overview, as I mentioned, Belo Horizonte is the capital city where we're based right now. It's a city of approximately 3 million, the, the greater metropolitan area. It has The state itself has 853 municipalities. It's got the most cities in the, uh, the state with the most cities in all of Brazil. It has 60% of the historical heritage. And I'm pleased to say some of that heritage is strongly linked to the British. Um, there's, a, there's a city just outside the Horizonte called Nova Lima, which has a strong British uh, heritage from the mining sector. Um, we even have a, a lake called Lagoa dos Ingleses, the, the, the lake of the Englishmen. Um, and and the, the locals are always keen to, to emphasize that. Um, it's also the birthplace of Oscar Neymar, Brazil's celebrated uh, internationally renowned architect who, architect who built the capital city, Brasilia, as well. Um, and it's also known for, for the fun side. And it's known for, as the bar capital of the world, as recently um, diagnosed, we could say, by the New York Times, but certainly shot to prominence during the World Cup here when when uh, showed uh, hosted many matches. Next slide, please. <coughs> And I think it's important to put now the state into a wider context of relating to things you might be, you'll be more familiar with. So the population is just over 20 million inhabitants, the second most populous state in Brazil, and similar size to Australia. Um, and territorially, it's again, it's one of the biggest states in Brazil. It's the fourth biggest, actually. Um, and it's similar, actually, slightly larger uh, than, the, than all of France. And in GDP terms, it's the equivalent to the, to the GDP of Chile or even Israel, uh, to give you an idea comparatively regionally and internationally. And 
for Brazilian terms, it's got a, a relatively diversified economy as well, which is, I think, you'll have noted from the breadth of our overview that we'll cover today in the different sectors. Um, where you can look at the breakdown, it accounts for almost 10% of the whole of Brazilian GDP, and you can see there as well the breakdown between industry, services, and agriculture. Uh, which is the concentration in services, but also agriculture is also a very prominent industry here. If we could on to, uh, move on to the next slide, please. I particularly like this slide. I think it, it gives you a real taste of how industry is spread out across the state, um, from the north to the south and, and, and horizontally as well. Um, but you can see clearly there the, 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 the bigger concentration centrally, that, that central part is where the, the capital and the surrounding industrial region is based, and also the, the central south region, which is which is regions we've been visiting recently and we've come back quite optimistic with the business opportunities presenting themselves. Um, if we could, next slide please. And how does Minas Gerais sit within the wider Brazil? Well, you can see on the map it's, it's neighboring to Rio and São Paulo, which any, any foreigner um, or overseas visitor will firstly be able to reference São Paulo and Rio. So certainly it's a challenge for locals here to, uh, to push the, uh, their selves in terms of perception amongst São Paulo and Rio. But it's important to note as well, São Paulo and Rio are quite concentrated markets, be it businesses, universities uh, from all around the world, be it British, be it German, Australian, Japanese, they tend to flock to São Paulo and Rio first, and it becomes quite saturated. Um, and so if you're looking at an initial launch pad or a footprint into uh, Brazil, Minas Gerais could be the opportunity. And within this 800 kilometers radius that includes the, the key populations of all of Brazil, um, Minas Gerais is well located right within that, you know, from the, the, the capital of the country to Sao Paulo, Rio, um, and the different industrial hubs, be it oil and gas, um, and other industrial heartlands as well. Um, I think, a, from my point of view, a key thing to uh, highlight there is wages and employment in a range of different industry sectors and levels of employment, be it director level, uh, manager level, engineers, technicians, uh, they have very competitive costs and, and generally cheaper than Sao Paulo or Rio, and Rio, despite being in such close proximity. And the quality of labor uh, is very strong as well, which I'll get into briefly with education. Next slide, please. And to highlight a few of the key infrastructure um, elements to, to bring to your attention, it has the largest net road network in Brazil, and given the state strategically shares borders with so many other key states, a lot of transit goes through the state, even if it's not uh, at the final point not being the state. So it is a, it's a big transit hub as well. It has the second largest railway network, um, although much of it is private, you know, directed to the mining sector, so companies like Vale, uh, the big Brazilian mining multinational, will own thousands of kilometers of, of railway, um, which can be used for freight as well. It uh, has one of the largest international airports in the country, uh, and the busiest, and it's also, you know, between Rio, Sao Paulo, and Brasilia, it's between 45 and 60 minute flights to each of these cities. Um, and there's five drive ports as well, and I think particularly to highlight more general infrastructure, where the, the trend is going towards an infrastructure, there's more focus on PPPs, more and more, not just in Minas, but in Brazil, but we're seeing a big concentration of that focus in, in Minas as a solution uh, to the financial difficulties states find themselves, and also you know, bringing in the private sector can, can bring about better service provision. So we've seen that in infrastructure, in education, and in healthcare, which is something if you're interested in, please do let us know as well. Next slide, please. And the state is also a reference for education in general, but particularly corporate education. Here in, in, in Belo Horizonte, it's home to Fundação Dom Cabral, which is the leading business school, as voted for the past 12 years, or, or maybe more even. Uh, a terrific university with campuses in all the key cities in Brazil. 
and more generally looking at the wider education sector, it has just over 10% of the students enrolled in university are based in the state. Um, and it's the second most in the country. As the second best university in the country, which is UFMG, the federal university. Um, the vice chancellor of the university is a self-confessed Anglophile. Um, he's been practically building links with, with a range of British universities and will actually, thankfully for us, be visiting the UK once again uh, next month to, to further consolidate those partnerships. Um, but it's particularly strong, strong in science, innovation, and engineering as well. Not just UFMG, but the universities across the state. has 10% of Brazilian researchers and 15% of the engineers. And importantly, where it comes to patents, it has among the highest rates of patent applications as well, um, which is that case of commercializing the research that's been conducted. Okay, so, uh, and now I'll be handing over to our colleague Natalia here. Hi, everyone. Uh, now we are going to speak a little bit about uh, the commercial part of the state, about the import and exports. Minas Gerais is the second largest ex export state of Brazil. And mostly these exports are about commodities, as you can see in this slide. So uh, many are about mining and agriculture. So we are the main coffee exporter of, the, of Brazil. And uh, the main gold exporter also. And our ore is very important in exporting for, uh, from our state. Next slide, please. This is a brief about uh, the main products exported and imported by Minas Gerais and the main uh, partners. So as you can see, China is uh, still the main partners uh, uh, for export and also for imports. And we also have uh, United States, Germany, China, Canada, Argentina and Australia as the main uh, partners. So we want to increase the UK numbers in this slide. So I hope, hopefully next year we are going to show a different figure for this. Next slide, please. So uh, this is mainly from uh, the UK, the trade with the UK. So Minas Gerais imports from the UK mainly uh, manufactured products, as you can see. Uh, nuclear reactions, uh, electrical machinery, optical, uh, photographic instruments, pharmaceutical products, which is a huge opportunity. And the export is uh, mainly in commodities, as you can see. Uh, Semi-precious stones, coffee, tea, uh, inorganic chemicals, and, and many others. Next slide, please. And these are the main British companies uh, present here, uh, who has uh, built, uh, has places here. So Anglo America is the biggest uh, one here, and BT and GE Healthcare has a main um, operation here also. And and we hopefully have uh, wants to have some more companies join us here. So now I'm gonna uh, we are gonna pass through uh, the sectors itself. So Romero is going to explain to us about the advanced engineering. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, in this part, we'll talk about sectors where advanced engineering is applied. The sectors we'll be discussing today uh, will be automotive, aerospace, with defense and the security sector inside, uh, inside the aerospace, and mining in metallurgy. Next. Next, next slide, please. Minas Gerais account for the second largest Brazilian automotive park. We have it in 2011, you have hopefully about 3.6 million units very producing, including cars, trucks, light vehicles, and buses. As you can see, 8.3 of all vehicles exported nationally in 2008. This number increased a little bit less years, but we do not have the exact number at the moment. Uh, the first industry sold in automotive industry sold in Minas Gerais was Fiat producing light vehicles and uh, some commercial cars too. Also. Today, Iveco, that is also part of uh, Fiat, 
is in Nimes, as, as well as Mercedes-Benz, who's producing trucks in Juiz de Fora, is in south of part of the state. Of course, these attract a lot of uh, auto parts manufacturers as well, and many other services. There's a very industrial parts companies that in surround the cities where automotive industries are installed. Next slide, please. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry, can you return for the previous slides? I made a few mistakes here. There's some more to talk about the automotive sector. Uh, <clears throat> Brazil is among the top five largest vehicle markets in the world, with a fleet of uh, over 40, 40 million four wheels vehicles and 13 million motorcycles in 2014. So there are lots of opportunities for exports to Brazil as well. The state of Minas Gerais is the second largest market in Brazil with approximately 10.8% of the fleet. Uh, we have about 20 million inhabitants, as Thomas said before, so we have about 4.41 uh, inhabitants per car in Minas Gerais. São Paulo is the first one, Minas Gerais is the second in Brazil. The opportunities for the bridge companies here uh, reside mainly in plant renovation, new technologies and design. And uh, we have some com many companies, as you can see in the bottom of the slide, like Magnet Marelli, Mercedes Benz, and Airtel Group, that they're very interested in many of these companies, including Fiat. They're investing a lot in new technologies, and especially in R&D. So the opportunities reside mainly there, and the re renewal of the manufacturing plants. Uh, just a second. The automotive sector experiencing stabilization of investment in, in Brazil in general. The BNDS is Brazilian investment bank, is a public bank. Uh, Produces a growth of just 0.4 percent to 59 billion reais in the period for between 2015 and 2018, if you compare it to 2010 and 2013. Most of this is a result of the maturation of massive investment in previous year. It's important to highlight that the automotive sector grows a lot in the previous years in Brazil, especially with, uh, when we include in class C, D, and E in the consumer markets. The investment in this period, 2015-2018, will be mainly in modernization of manufacturing plants, development of new products, and decrease of their productive capacity uh, by ampliation of current manufacturing plants or building new plants like windshields. The productive capacity should increase from 4.5 million vehicles units to 6 million vehicles in this period. The competitiveness in the sector is affected by many factors. With the ascension of the lower class to consumer markets in the recent years, as I told before, price was a very good strong factor. However, with the maturation of the market, other factors become of high importance. High quality and innovation engineering design are currently very important factors of competitiveness. This coupled with the trend of electrifying cars is probably one of the segments that offers more opportunities to the UK companies. Other opportunities, as I said before, is in the renovation and R&D. Next slide, please. Aerospace. Major has become a benchmark for investment in the airline industry. The proposal to diversify the economy against strength with the development of an aerospace complex in the state. Here in Minas Gerais, we have the only helicopter manufacturing company in Latin America, is Eli Brice. Minas Gerais is the second largest consumer market in Brazil for executive aviation, tuba helices, and jets. Embraer is the main Brazilian company that manufactures airplanes. It's the second or third in the world at the moment. Sorry, it's the third in the world at the moment. 
they set engineering center in this state. In Minas Gerais, there is the first industrial airport in Brazil with maintenance and repair of commercial plants. So they went, because of the proximity with Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro and the uh, plenty of space to expand, the idea is made him, Minas Gerais, the main center for repairing and maintenance for civil aircraft, especially commercial ones. Next slide, please. This is some of the main companies we have here in the aerospace sector. Aerospace and defense, in fact. IVEC is part of Fiat, and they produce tanks, armored cars, and some machinery for agriculture, too. Eddie Bryce is manufacturing uh, helicopter manufacturers, as I said before, and they produce helicopter for civil and military use. They have, at the moment, a contract with the Brazilian government to produce 48 helicopters, uh, like transport, transportation helicopters, about 17 persons. Uh, it's 48 helicopters for the Brazilian means of defense and the two helicopters for the uh, presidents of the republic in Brazil. It's important to highlight that there is no cut in the budget, not a uh, postponing project about this. So the old project is still firm and still contracting, is still with lots of opportunities about uh, the helicopter sectors. Airbrise basically they, is, is a part of the, the, the Airbus group. So they uh, bring crude helicopter here to Brazil and they like send the helicopter and uh, customize for each client. So the main opportunity there is for customizing helicopters. In Bell, is a company on the defense sector only. Uh, uh, it belongs to the Brazilian army. Produce mainly uh, armored, armored cars and tanks. Next slide, please. This is a map about Minas Gerais, and uh, with some aerospace sectors is divided in these sectors. I will, tell, I, I will talk about some sectors there. In Belo Horizonte is the capital, is the main city in the state. Uh, it's part of the development project in state government, the, in the Tancredo Neves International Airport. It will become the first aerotropolis or airport seat in the south center part of Brazil. And this is envisaged to, to be carried on in the Confins Airport, which constitutes another pillar for Minas Gerais to become the stage of large aircraft industry especially for, for repairs and maintenance of civil aircraft. It will attract high-tech companies in the area of the Sunrise Terminal. Embraer, for example, inaugurated at the end of 2014 the expansion of its engineering technology center in the state. It's called SATEC MG. And it's located here in Belizonte. In the facilities of the Senai, is a, a center for uh, tech, uh, high-tech uh, education. And FIENG, FIENG is Federation of the Industry in the state of Minas Gerais. The center is the only one in Brazil other than its headquarters in São Paulo, in São José dos Campos, in the state of São Paulo. That's near the border to Minas Gerais, too. In Lagoa Santa, there's a technology and aerospace training center. Engineer of Saint Embraer that works in the area of such a development, development projects, products, and sets for the aviation, defense, and security sectors is the Lagoa Santa. The operation is focused on three areas of technology, including aerodynamics, engineering loads, aerospace structures, and simulation software systems. In Itajubá, in the south part of the state, uh, there is El Brains, the only helicopter manufacturers in South America, as I said. Uh, the manufacturing itself uh, has more than 700 employees and is created in partnership with the Federal University of Tajubá uh, Helicopter Technology Center. In Guayana, there is a Itamar Franco Airport that opened a part of the actions of the government of Minas Gerais for its expansion and improvement of the state airport network. The airport has a second long runway of landing in Minas Gerais with over 2,500 meters. 
the state is doing the possibility of transforming the surrounds of the airport in the center of, for enterprises providing services in order to meet the market of oil exploration in the crystal law uh, layer of the, of the coast of Rio de Janeiro is processing here. Next slide, please. Mining is one of the most important sectors in Brazil, in Minas Gerais. As you can see, 53% of the Brazilian mineral, mineral production uh, is here in Minas Gerais. Brazil, Minas Gerais is by far the world, world's largest producer of uh, niobium. In Brazil, it's very large producer for iron ore, gold, steel, silicon, zinc, phosphate, and bauxite, bauxite, bauxite nick, and nickel. It's also the largest big iron hook in the country. Mineral production, production has increased significantly in the last years, with investment of companies interested in exploiting preserve iron ore, gold, diamonds, phosphate, zinc, aluminum, silicon, silicon metals, or limestones, lead, ornamental rocks, not neodymium, and hard earths. Yeah. Minas Gerais accounts for the foreign percentage of the Brazilian exports. Uh, uh, sorry, I just have this. Uh, next slide, please. This is some of the, the mining, the ore that we have in here. And some very large companies. And they, as you can see, Anglo Gold Ashanti has a part of the, used to have a part of British investment, used to be leased in, in the long stock, uh, stock exchange. But I think they no longer there. Uh, next, next slide, please. Metallurgy is, of course, a continuity of mining in here in Minas Gerais. 34% of total Brazilian production of coal steel is, is here. That means there are lots of opportunities for heavy metal company, companies that use, um, uh, have use of metals. In 2014, the Brazilian produ productivity was uh, over 30 million, uh, uh, was the ninth largest world producer of crude steel. Minas Gerais, it, has, it was 11.8 million tons here. The metal in, in the steel industry in Minas Gerais produced a third of total produced in Brazil, one of the large producers in the world, of course. Three quarters of industry in Minas Gerais corresponds to the transformation in the industry, and you can see some very large companies down in the bottom of these slides, too. Now we'll pass, we're talking about now about life science in the healthcare. Okay. Hello everyone, this is Andreas Giafas. I represent Healthcare UK. Um, I'm going to talk about healthcare. Um, healthcare UK, some of you might have heard, is a joint venture between uh, the Department of Health, United in Trade and Investment, UKTR, and the NHS, the National Health System in England, in, in Britain. Um, healthcare UK is um, starting a development here in Brazil in all states, uh, promoting British, the British healthcare industry. And uh, we are very happy to be here in Belo Horizonte and Minas Gerais, which is seen as a state of uh, great opportunities. Uh, similar to the other states in Brazil, Minas Gerais has a mix of public, pure public, uh, public and private, and pure private uh, healthcare providers. Uh, in Brazil, the public system is uh, run through S the SUS, SUS, similar to NHS. We have the uh, a large variety of uh, private insurance companies, 
um, which cater for the majority of the healthcare system. And we have a number of private or PPP projects or developments. Uh, in fact, Minas Gerais is one of the leaders in PPPs, not only in healthcare. It's quite an advanced state in uh, PPPs. Um, I'm, on our slide, we, I listed only five of a number of opportunities that, uh, that we have now in Minas Gerais. Um, again, of a mix of public, public and private, and private developments. Um, recently, we've seen uh, a new hospital uh, inaugurated here in December. Uh, it's, a, it's the Belo Horizonte Metropolitan Hospital. It opened uh, a first phase, and there's another second and third phases to be, to be developed in the, over the next couple of years. That um, is one of the strategic projects that, that Healthcare UK is looking into, discussing with the SPV who won this contract how we can support them with equipment, new equipment, um, funding, and uh, the management of, uh, of, of this hospital. Um, the second project that we listed, uh, just a small correction, rather than a state of Minas Gerais development, it's actually a city of Belo Horizonte project, um, where primary care, again, uh, very much based onto the into the British system of uh, of uh, primary care. Uh, it's a new program. It's uh, being developed. Uh, we have a SPV or SPA uh, running this project, and uh, we see it as a, a very good reference uh, for for similar projects in in other metropolitan areas uh, of Brazil. Um, the other project we missed mentioned it's it's Femig. Femig is a is a state-owned uh, uh, authority. Actually, runs about 20 hospitals in the state of Minas Gerais, and they are now looking at modernizing some of their hospitals, and uh, they are discussing with the state uh, bank uh, how to model their uh, uh, model a PPP for this modernization program. Now going to more like a private, the private sector, uh, we have a medical city project being planned here in Belo Horizonte, which is part of the Aerotropolis that Romero just mentioned, uh, the area around the international airport of uh, medical city VH is a very ambitious project. Um, we are discussing state of Minas Gerais, uh, how we can support their development, where they want to bring a variety of, of, of development into this, uh, this project. Uh, finally, uh, we listed uh, Unimed BH. It's, um, some of you might have heard of Unimed. It's, uh, it's actually the largest health or private health insurance uh, plan in Brazil. Uh, it's among the five largest in the world. The part is actually the second largest in the world, the Unimed national Unimed system. And uh, the Unimed Diaga is, uh, I think, the third in the, of the Unimed uh, network. And, um, and they are extremely innovative. They just opened an innovation center, and they're looking into uh, expanding, of course, and getting a lot of British expertise for their, for their expansion. So that's a little bit of Minas Gerais. Um, important to say to you that we're looking at five different areas for in healthcare. We're looking at health systems development, clinical services, education and training, infrastructure for health, and digital health. Okay, next slide, please. So hi, everyone. This is Natalia again. Uh, I'm going to uh, brief you about uh, life sciences and some other sectors. So for now, uh, life sciences first. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, we are uh, one of the biggest Brazilian life sciences and biotechnology hub. 
So here we are concentrating mainly, uh, mainly in uh, human health and also for uh, veterinary health. For, uh, for example, we are the uh, world largest Zebu genetic hub. We have an uh, excellent poll for genetic bovine in the, uh, the Triangulo Mineiro area. So they are very specialized in this genetic, which is very important here. And Zebu is a cattle imported from India, but uh, actually we have the, the main uh, genetic uh, studies for this uh, cattle here. And there are plenty of opportunities with them since they are uh, uh, working with uh, foreign uh, institutions also. As I can say, they are working with the United States in some research, so we can also explore this, uh, this with the UK. And we have uh, 105 companies in Gerais, mainly in, uh, they are divided in three hubs. Mainly are in Belo Horizonte, and, which is the capital. 12% uh, is in the Triangle Mineiro, and 10 per, around 10% around in, in Zona da Mata region, which is, which is close to Rio de Janeiro State. And uh, we have divided in life sciences uh, companies in healthcare, which is 44%, and biotechnology, 46%. And as you can see the data in the slide, uh, we have 41.9, uh, uh, sorry, uh, of renewable, uh, over, uh, sorry, almost 50% of them uh, have 1 million uh, reais over, re Reno, uh, renewable review, and I would like to speak a little bit uh, more re, uh, about the research side of that because uh, we are we have uh, a hub for researchers here for this uh, for life sciences. We have a uh, few crews here. They have researchers in uh, the, uh, diseases like leishmaniosis and also biotech products, which is very interesting. Biominas is the first Brazilian incubator here, and it's located in Belo Horizonte, and it's one of the main players in biotech in, in Brazil. FUNED is a state uh, foundation for researchers in vaccines and diagnostics and other things. Emominas, which is, uh, they have researchers in blood uh, here, here in Minas Gerais. It's one of the biggest in Brazil. Uh, we have some companies, also. one of the companies that I, I would like to mention is Biome, which is, uh, they are planning the, one of the biggest plans for insulin uh, development here in Minas Gerais. Formerly, they were the Biobras. Uh, during the 70s and 80s, they produced the insulin here, but sold the, uh, their company to Novo and Rodisky. But after that, uh, the patent is still with them. So they are now uh, going to inaugurate a plant, uh, an operational plant, which we will be doing to uh, 2017. Next slide, please. Now we're going to talk a little bit about agribusiness. Next, please. So as I mentioned before, agribusiness is one of the main business for Minas Gerais. And as you can see in this rank, we are, this rank, we are uh, one of the, we are the most exported coffee in the world. There is a, a interesting data about it because 60% of Starbucks coffee is Brazilian coffee and mainly Minas Gerais coffee, but they don't uh, spread out these words because they would increase the price of Brazilian coffee uh, in the in the stock exchange. So. Uh, these sectors, uh, coffee, milk, and and cattle, they have research centers here also. So mainly with uh, Embrapa, which is our research agency here in Brazil for agriculture and uh, cattle, they have three, four centers here in Minas Gerais, and they uh, may uh, they do researches along with Epamig, which is the Minas Gerais uh, research company. Next slide, please. So, uh, as you can see, we, uh, we are the country's largest dairy producers, and we are 
responsible for uh, for beef producer uh, produce also. There is a huge uh, project for uh, fruit produce, production in the north of the state, which, which is called uh, Projeto Jaiba, and this is to develop that region, which is one of the poorest regions of our state. Our state is uh, to be compared uh, in Brazil. The north part of the state is a little, uh, still a little bit poor, and uh, with the wealth is concentrated in the south of the state. So we have both Brazilian realities here state unfortunately and uh, we have we are the second produce for ethanol the uh, coffee we are the champions actually uh, next slide please and these are some companies that we have here as I mentioned and Braco it's uh, has a, a four labs here and we also have Itambel which is uh, production for milk Bonjo, which, uh, which is one of the world's uh, largest companies, Tres Corações is for coffee, and Cardio is one of the largest companies in the world. Next. So ICT. ICT has very interesting cases here, which uh, we would like to show you. Next. We are becoming the, uh, one of the hubs of IT sector for Brazil. So uh, we have the biggest information technology, nano and micro technology uh, hub in the country, with more than uh, 5,000 companies present, uh, present here, and with 2.3 billion reais revenues. And we have some initiatives here that I would like to, to present to you. Google. Uh, bought in 2005, uh, they bought Alcon, which was a, a company developing inside UFMG, our federal university here in Belo Horizonte. They developed uh, an algorithm for, res for research over internet. And Google bought that company after they developed this uh, algorithm. And now uh, Google uh, in, in Belo Horizonte is their hub for uh, research and development in development in the south. Santa Rita do Sapucaí is, uh, they have the Valley of Electronica, uh, the Valley of Electronics there, and they have more than two, uh, 200 companies uh, producing in, uh, in the area, and mostly do uh, the, the university they have there, which is in Ateo. It's a, it's a higher education center for uh, electronics and telecommunication studies. Uh, São Pedro's Valley is the biggest uh, startups um, community. They developed on their own by 2011, and uh, they won a prize, the uh, award, the Spark Award in two, uh, 2014, for the mo the best startup community in the world. MGTI, MGTI, uh, TI is a project that the Associations of IT of the state, they uh, they got together to develop a plan for uh, for Minas Gerais to become the high, uh, the the highest sorry the uh, the biggest hub center for IT in the in Brazil. So they are developing a training plan and developing the companies here. To, so. By 2022, they became the uh, we became the biggest hub here. And Seed is a startup uh, development plan uh, by the government. They just opened the the new round of the of the bid. They give around 80 80,000 reais for companies, uh, miniaturized companies or foreign companies also to come here and start up their projects here in Minas Next. So there are a few institutions uh, of the states. So we have three uh, technological uh, technolo technology parks here: Biagatec, Tecnopark in Viçosa, and PCTI uh, in Itajubá. And mainly, uh, our science and technology research centers are located in the universities, as you can see there. Next.
And these are the main ICT companies present here in uh, Minas Gerais. Unitec is for semiconductors. And since Brazil has a uh, very uh, interesting technology in LED technology here, GE is also here. Google, as I mentioned in the uh, the case. Next. Now I'm going to pass over to Carolina, so she's going to speak a little bit about energy and some other sectors. Uh, next slide, please. So in Minas, you have the largest integrated electric company in South America, which is called the Migi. It's also a key investor in the state, and one of its most recent projects is on smart grids. Well, in 2012, they started to uh, they started a trial run in a city just in the greater area of the state's capital, and um, they are trying out this new method with the, the smart grids, and it's intended to be implemented in other cities in the near future. Uh, Minas Gerais is quite new to the alternative methods, uh, energy methods. So, in 2014, we had a very successful with the World Cup, the, the state government and the Semiki, they started an initiative so that we could have um, the first stadium in Brazil to run purely on um, solar energy. And now the Mineirão, which is the stadium, produces enough energy for uh, as much energy as 900 homes. And last year, we had the first bus in Minas to run purely on electric energy. And we got a very positive feedback from the population on this project. And as it's a very new um, type of investment for Brazil and Minas Gerais too, you can see by the figures on the, the lower part of the slide that there is huge potential for investments, 4 billion in solar energy and 20 billion in wind energy in the next five years. Um, next slide, please. Next slide again, <laughs> thank you. So on the other sectors, just a quick overall and a few key interesting points. On the transportation and distribution sector, Minas Gerais um, exports, 98% are made through sea transportation. And so this is the, the products are sent through the highway to the wet port and then trans and then shipped. And on the imports, that data, that figure is 60% for sea transport and 35 by highway transportation. Um, on the advertising and marketing, last year the, the Electronic Valley created a group for companies which is called Inspire Marketing that focuses on uh, gathering know-how, ideas and on widening the region's growth capacity through, this, through good marketing and new uh, ideas. On hospitality and tourism, Minas Gerais has a very rich history, um, as Minas was a state that they, the colonizers found lots of uh, gold. There were um, many road, There are many roads th throughout the state where you can travel and see how uh, through the royal road, which is where the royal family was uh, passed through. And also, you can we have a very well preserved Baroquian architecture, and also lots of uh, work from Oscani and Maya. And on the real estate market, um, it's a very good time for rent and to buy. Also, due to our high interest rates, people are not um, wanting to buy a lot of Brazilian uh, Brazilian population is not wanting to buy a lot of the. Um, the real estate. So uh, the prices are dropping and the owners are negotiating for rent. And on the retail and fashion, Minas produces 11% of the total textile product, pr products and one of this Minas trend preview is one of the major fashion events in Brazil. It shows firsthand the in industry's tendencies. It happens twice a year. And it's now supported by the state and local government, which is seeking to further the growth in the industry. And next slide. Well, thank you very much, Carol. I think now we'll be going to questions and answers, which Jill will kindly help us with. We're looking to get this through as many questions as you as uh, through as possible. But just quick, uh, a feel, I think, just to emphasize, um, it's you know the concept's been over since September, 
and the amount of opportunities we come across, we've been greatly encouraged by. Um, and you know, the local population love the Brits, want to engage more, want to learn more what the UK has to offer in terms of exports, in terms of investors, business partners. So it's, it's a moment really to, to take advantage of. And, and over to Q&A now. Thank you very much, Thomas. And um, we do have lots of questions that come, have come in. Um, if we don't have a chance to get to all of them, your questions will be forwarded and um, they will be answered um, after the webinar. And so our first question here is, um, in which areas do you believe the UK companies can have more opportunities in the uh, Minister as State? Well, certainly, we, we gave quite a breadth of, of opportunities there. It, it really is quite a broad spectrum. Uh, we resist to pinpoint one or two areas um, and exclude others for that reason. But certainly, it's, Ministry of has a very strong um, manufacturing, advanced engineering uh, base, be it in aerospace, automotive. And, and I think the, the name of the game, the word of the day is you know, greater efficiency, better technology, more innovation, and that's what the UK is so good at. So it's, it's looking at to, you know, to join up the, the best of the UK products and, and capabilities and services in this area uh, and finding local partners and where the Brazilian side can cut down on costs and create greater efficiency and productivity, uh, that's, that's a, a key priority. But certainly, mining sector with the, the, the recent tragedy uh, in Mariana, which is in the state of Minas Gerais, was a huge environmental disaster. Again, the, the pressure is on the mining sector to improve, um, to be more sustainable, to bring in better technologies, um, to have a, more consideration in, in minimizing impact on the environment. So certainly, again, this is where the UK can provide solutions, tech, technology and expertise. Uh, and beyond that there, you know, agri-tech and healthcare are certainly other areas we, we're very optimistic about in terms of engaging uh, the local business population and the British population. But certainly there is a breadth, which is why we've been so broad in our coverage today. Thank you very much. And our next question here from um, Alison. And Alison um, is saying that they are a manufacturing of env environmental health and safety product for the metalworking industry. And they currently have a distributor based in Sao Paulo. Would you say it's necessary to have more than one distributor to cover Brazil? And should one of those be Minas Gerais? Uh, generally speaking, because of Brazil's continental size, usually distributors don't cover the whole country in the first place. Um, I think a, a first question to the, the distributor in Sao Paulo is to better understand the relationships that they have in Minas Gerais and the companies and operations of companies based there. Um, it's certainly worth a look, you know, I think, locally, whether there may be a distributor um, with more uh, capabilities locally and the connections and the relationships to, to advance business interests. So please uh, do get in touch with us. Uh, don't hesitate. That's an area of interest for us particularly. We're keen to promote British expertise, be it academia or commercial expertise um, in this quite difficult and challenging scenario in the mining sector we find at the moment. Thank you very much. And moving on to our next question from Hannah. Um, Hannah is asking, what kind of input do you foresee being most required from UK university institutions? For example, research, consultancy, teaching expertise. Some key areas of, of interest certainly are English language training uh, and, and training capacity building more generally. Uh, that would be more of the, the the school network, so this wouldn't be necessarily targeted at university level. But certainly uh, partnerships and collaboration. You know, we have our tools and mechanisms such as the Newton Fund, we have joint calls between UK and Brazilian academics and businesses, and we're keen to do more of that. We're seeing a good level of demand from, from universities, British universities, and interests here. We recently had visits from the University of Loughborough, from the University of Warwick, from Birmingham, and we had a UK universities fair. We had about 60 British universities visit here at Belo Horizonte. Um, certainly, what the locals are keen on is student mobility, um, you know, getting students overseas and bringing students here. We have the good fortune that University of Strathclyde are actually sending 
uh, a number of their students here for three months to UFMG uh, for an exchange program. And it's quite a, a watershed uh, case study, we think, where we're keen to promote that. There's certainly student mobility uh, research and collaboration partnerships, and where together Brazilian and British universities can engage industry. Thank you. And following on from that um, answer regarding the education, and um, we have a question here from Vincent. Um, Vincent is part of the College of Public Speaking in London, and um, they offer online courses um, facilitated by video, Skype, and written submissions. Um, is that type of education popular in um, ministerials, and how would they go about um, connecting with the correct people? Yes, uh, certainly I think it would be of interest, um, and I think given it's online, it's actually a positive thing with, with the challenges in um, the, the, the fluctuation of the currency exchange rate. It's actually it's quite difficult for Brazilian students to travel to the UK, so way we can harness technology and, use, and do things online, um, that is certainly of interest. And again, there is such a, a broad population, a student university population here, um, we'd be keen to understand better from, from, from Vincent what his exact interests are, so please do get in touch. Thank you very much. And moving on to our next question here from Alison. Um, and Alison is asking, are there already manufacturers of mining equipment based in Minas Gerais? Uh, thank you for your question, Alison. Yes, there are uh, in, in Brazil and um, across the country as well. Um, and, and there are active suppliers to the industry, uh, but that's not to say that there aren't uh, you know, British suppliers in the market, which there are, and certainly here in Minas Gerais, in a smaller scale, but we're looking to, as UKTI, to support them to grow their business here, um, and also importation of, of equipment they can't find here, or you know, the full package. It's not just supplying the equipment, it's integrating it to the, the wider equipment systems that a mining company might have, and also delivering the maintenance, which is something that a lot of local service providers don't give. They provide the, the kit, the equipment, and then they don't follow up. So when the equipment breaks down, it incurs more costs for the company because they have no way of fixing it. Um, and where you know, British suppliers generally have a more integrated offering, um, that's, that's, I think, certainly welcome. But I also think potentially, if, if Alison, if your business has a unique offer, is potentially looking at uh, you know a local partner um, that you can engage with. So again, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you. And moving on to the next question here from Maria Angelica. Um, she's asking, she'd like to know about the level of knowledge in English in the state and uh, bilingual schools. Are there statistics available about that? We don't have any statistics immediately to hand, but we can certainly provide that um, to if, if Maria Angela can get in touch. Um, it, there's a good level of English, but like a lot of Brazil, it's if you go lower down, you, you could call you know the chain in, in a business, you you will encounter less people speaking English. So it's absolutely a challenge. It's, it's a new state government. The elections were last year, like the federal government. They're rolling out an, an English teaching program across the state. One challenge is it does you know, have limitations in funding, so they are looking for partners, and it's something the British Council is going to get actively engaged with them uh, as well. It's a good level. It could, it could be better. It needs to be better. Um, within Belize Zonchi, we have a number of education providers. We even have the likes of British companies like Pearson's, who own local uh, subsidiaries as well. They're quite active, and you have the Cultura Inglesa, which is quite prominent in Brazil, and the local franchise in Belo Horizonte is quite a strong one. They're quite active, and we're also developing a good relationship with them. So any service providers for English training and capacity building for English language teaching, um, we're keen to explore that as well. Thank you. And being very conscious of time, um, we'll just take um, one more question, and it is a bit of a follow-up from um, the previous answer. And this one is from Mariana. Um, which industries are the best to approach about English language training opportunities? Is there a specific industry that has more use for English rather than another one? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily limit it to industries as such. I take it from a slightly different approach. One, obviously, is, is the university base and English language training schools themselves. 
which is an area of focus for them. But also, it, it's looking at the big, bigger companies in the state, whatever sector they might be in. You know, for example, Fiat Chrysler, um, the, the Latin America HQ is here in Minas Gerais. They have a, a huge demand for all, a range of different training. Uh, you have companies like Samarco and others as well. So I think it, it's looking at uh, targeting the big national and multinational companies based here. Um, and you have, again, a big multinational Brazilian conglomerate uh, based in Minas Gerais called Andrade Gutierrez. Uh, more and more looking you know, to, to develop partnerships with UK businesses. Again, there will be a demand there for English language training, which, which needs to be capitalized upon. Thank you very much. So that is all of the questions that we do have time for. So Thomas, if I could just hand back to you for any closing remarks before we end the webinar. Thank you, Jill, and, and thank you to the team here. We hope you found it useful. Again, just end for, you know, it's really just an overview. Uh, we're very keen to hear from you. What are your interests? What would you like to find out? What more? What sectors are you interested in? Because that also helps us define uh, and, and focus more our strategy. Because it's as as we painted the picture. There's a lot of different sectoral opportunities in Minas Gerais. So your feedback is helpful. Uh, we're keen to you know for PC open door policy. What questions you might have um, to have our contact details and and please don't hesitate to get in touch. And we'll do the best we can. Uh, to answer your questions and advance your interest in, in the state. We're keen to um, be a bridge between the UK and the MENAS business community, and that's what we'll do over the next coming years. Thank you very much, Thomas, and thank you to all of our presenters today. And more importantly, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Once you leave the webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. It's just three really quick questions, and we would appreciate if you could complete that and provide your feedback for us. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. On behalf of UKTI and our presenters, Thank you for joining us and please do enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.